My name is Frank Campion, and I've been an artist probably since, since I was eight years old. I grew up in New York City where the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney, the Guggenheim, the Metropolitan were kind of my playgrounds. And I remember spending a lot of time in those museums with my mother, who loved art. She was an interior decorator, a fashion designer, very creative. And she, she made sure that both my sister and I, you know, sort of got the art thing. So we spent a lot of time in museums. And one of my earliest sort of art-related memories was standing in front of a Jasper Johns painting of a map of the United States, huge painting. And it just kind of blew me away. And I remember thinking, gosh, grown-ups do this. This is something that grown-ups do and they're serious, and the museum is serious, and this art thing is, is important somehow. And so I started painting in school, and drawing and painting, and um, continued through boarding school and college and into, into my 30s. Um, I, you know, I just always was interested in imagery, uh, flat surfaces, how things worked, how they worked together, color, line, all of the elements that go into creating, creating imagery. And the kind of work that I have been attracted to and, and been absorbed with over the years is, is abstraction, non-objective painting. And I think the reason is that um, I, I love the idea that a painting or a drawing or a work on paper can kind of have a life of its own, that it doesn't need to refer to anything in particular, it doesn't need to explain itself or refer to something else, that it can stand on its own two feet and it can be sort of about itself. It can be about its color and about the materials that made it and its proportion and relationship and composition, and in the end can sort of be its own thing. And I love encountering, um, you know, great paintings are sort of like encountering a tree in the woods or a great mountain or a, a valley or a, or, or a beach that um, we take them in through the eye and we feel them in the soul and it's only later that we have language to attach to that experience. And I think abstract painting has that potential that it is a, an experience um, felt through the eyes straight to the heart. Um, so that uh, in that sense, I, I suspect that I am kind of old school, that I believe paintings can be self-referential, that they are about themselves, that subject matter is the paint itself, and the content is derived from the color, the application of the paint, the gesture, the movement of the pencil across the surface, the juxtaposition of elements create a kind of emotional context. Um, and especially through color. Um, color has always been sort of the major actor in my, in my work, and the drama, whatever drama there is in my work, is created by color. So um, I'm an abstract artist, and it has always had its teeth in me, and I haven't yet been able to shake it. So that's the kind of work that I create. That's a, that's a big question. Um, I think it just sort of happened over a long period of time, starting, I don't know, when I was a child, growing up in New York City. My mother took us to museums and made sure that we appreciated art. She also, um, she was a very creative person. She was an interior decorator and a fashion designer. She had her own fashion lines. and. Um, for her, it was all about how things looked, what worked, what didn't. Uh, proportion, color, texture, she was an interior decorator. All of these things sort of were at play in her, in her work. And I think I kind of absorbed that by osmosis, that, that concern, that interest, um, kind of got it by osmosis. And so I painted, I started painting uh, seriously when I was in grade school. I had a great teacher and I used to paint with him on the weekends. I'd go to his studio on the Upper West Side and we would paint the Hudson River and the tugboats and the bridges and uh, we would go to the museums and, and look at the paintings and talk about them and why, what we liked and why we'd like them. 
Um, and I continued in through boarding school and into college. Um, I became friends with a number of students at Rhode Island School of Design and spent a lot of time there. And when I came out of college, I uh, uh, was fortunate to be offered a teaching position in the art department of a small college up in New Hampshire. And I did that for about three or four years and that gave me the opportunity to really develop develop some work on my own. So I think the decision got made somewhere along the line in there. And I kept thinking, and I, my father kept hoping that uh, as I got through college that my attention would turn to more serious pursuits. Um, but uh, they, never, they never really did. And so, uh, you know, I followed, I followed painting sort of into the, into the future. And that, that was really it. Um, you know, I'll have to say that I, I became fascinated um, with the paintings of the abstract expressionists, the de Kooning, Pollock, Franz Klein, um, the action painters. And um, I got to know, I had, I got to know Harold Rosenberg a little bit out in East Hampton, the critic. Um, I used to see de Kooning riding around on his bike and uh, I knew Adolf Gottlieb a little bit, uh, just as a young college student, basically, out in East Hampton. And these guys were my heroes. I mean, they, 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 they put America on the, on the art world map. Um, and Pollock especially was sort of this legendary, larger-than-life character who, you know, for whom painting was life. It, it just, it, it, it was really dramatic and emotional and important and spiritual and significant. And um, so those were sort of my grandfathers, I'd have to say. Rothko was a, was a big influence. Um, so when did I, how did I decide to become an artist? I, there's really no simple answer to that. I guess, I guess I'd have to say when I, when I got about halfway through college, the choice was like, what, you know, what, what are you gonna do when you grow up, so to speak? And I, there was what I wanted to do, which was to make art, and there was what I thought I should do, which was something else, and I didn't, it was never clear to me what that was. Um, so that's about as good as I can do with that, with that question. I don't know that anybody ever decides to become an artist. I think they just wake up one day and they are. Um, it's a long, a long process. Um, but I think everybody's different and finds their way to it in a different way. I, I, I sometimes feel that art chose me in a way that I really, maybe it wasn't so much of a choice. It was kind of a, a compulsion or a, or a necessity that I somehow needed to, needed to follow. And so, um, you know, I, I, I was involved in it until I was about 35 years old and uh, walked away from it for a while. I became very disillusioned with the art world uh, for a period of time, but I've been back in it for a couple of years now, a number of years now, and I'm, and I'm, and I once again have the mojo for it. So, um, I don't know, it's a tough, it's an interesting question. Drawing or sketching, however you wanna, wanna put it, sometimes for me, the activity is a, like a 30 second collage. Um, is a big part of my practice and in some ways maybe the most interesting and purest part of my practice. I have a notebook, I, I call it an idea book, um, and I'll, you know, I'll throw together a collage with, with some scraps of paper out of a magazine or uh, a cut up drawing that I've done that I've, that I've cut up and I'll put those elements together with tape and a little bit of glue sometimes and it, it, it'll only take 30 seconds. It's very spontaneous and very unencumbered by material or um, any thought to creating something final or complete. It's more just like, ooh, I love the way these things sort of look together. Um, I'm gonna put them together and just see, see what happens. And so that work in some respects, I think maybe it's the purest work I do because it is really spontaneous. I don't think about it very hard. I don't consider it in the way I consider the elements for a larger painting. Um, 
So in that respect, it frees me up. And I think of these things, the results, these little collages, little drawings, are not so much models for bigger work, but they're more like exercising an impulse and a kind of a rehearsal for maybe something bigger. And they give me the chance to really work out various different ideas, directions that I could go in with my work. Um, and it's very experimental and exploratory and spontaneous. And I think in that respect, um, it's sort of the freshest, it's the freshest work I do. It may be the best work I do. I don't, you know, I, I'm not really a very good judge of all that. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say about it is that it's very intimate. Um, the idea book that I have for, for Drawn also contains a lot of notes in the margins and associations with experiences that I associate with the work or that may have triggered uh, an idea. Uh, there's some work in there that is about textures of old, you know, driftwood and sand and beach grass and sort of abstracted elements like that that are juxtaposed and um, so that that is really the function for me it is that work really kind of has a life of its own and it's very important to me and very close to my heart and I never really intended any of it to be shown or seen but it is kind of interesting and I am proud of them I, I, I like them quite a bit and uh, sometimes they lead to bigger things and sometimes they don't but they are they are the salt and stew of my, uh, of my art practice. As to why I have this idea book with little sketches, I mean, they're almost, they're a little bit more formal than cocktail napkins, really, or post-it notes. Uh, why, do I, why do I do that? I keep coming back to it periodically. Um, I think I think there is something about capturing an idea or a sudden impulse that is very exciting and very fresh and very, it, it leads, leads me to new things in ways that, uh, you know, the process of creating a larger painting, it, it, it's a little more tactical. It, it, it's a little more planned, if you will. Planned isn't quite the right word, but you have to decide you have to make some decisions and take some actions with, with big paintings. It has to be, uh, the process is, is a little more extended and deliberate in some respects. But the sketches, the little drawings, the little collages, those things come together in, sometimes in less than a minute. And they're very fresh and very immediate. And I really love doing them because they're, they're kind of tossed off. There's, it's not a high stakes game in the way that a big painting can, can sometimes take on a, a kind of a, a greater implication uh, and seem sometimes maybe more important than it really is. So, you know, the, I, you know, I just love the spontaneousness of it. I love the sort of tossed off, in, almost insignificance of them. And in the end, I think for that reason, I love the way they look. You know, they, they have a real soul to them, I think. and. Um, you know, I, I think I said earlier, I, you know, that I, I never intend for them to be framed or to be seen by anybody, but I am proud of them and I love them. And in some ways they may be the best work I've, I've done. Um, so, you know, that, that's an itch that needs to get scratched on a pretty, pretty regular basis. And that's why I keep, keep the notebook. And, you know, I'll do, I'll do 10 or 15 of them at a time. I'll have a pile of scraps in the studio of old drawings that I've cut up or paintings on paper that I've cut up, scraps of paper lying around the studio, and I'll suddenly start playing with them, and I'll get on a roll and make five, six, ten, ten of these things at a time, and I'll just tape them, cut them up, tape them down, put them together, cut them up again, um, glue them down, and if I love the way they look, they stay, and if I don't, I throw them away. You know, it's, it's, it's a very spontaneous and casual, casual way of making art. So that's why I keep coming back to it, and that's why I love it. <laughs>